No, the title is not clickbait. I definitely made a mistake and I am in the process of returning my 8 gigabyte M1 MacBook Pro, which I have been using for all of my creative work for the past three months. A lot of Final Cut Pro editing to be more specific. And while I love the versatility and I've been able to get all my projects done, the editing experience has not been that great. So in this video, I wanna to touch on why I've come to this conclusion and I also wanna talk about the device that's going to replace this laptop once I send it back to Apple. But before we continue with this video here and before I talk about my lackluster experience and the device that will save the day, I wanna to quickly touch on today's video sponsor, Anchor, and their Soundcore Liberty Air 2 wireless earbuds. First up, the charging case offers up to 26 hours of charge and is super satisfying to open. The earbuds themselves are also really comfortable, come in some pretty snazzy colors and offer up to seven hours of playback. Soundcore also includes a plethora of ear tip sizes to suit your very needs. More importantly though, they sound great with their 11 millimeter pure note drivers offering hybrid active noise cancellation, which works as advertised. The case and buds also charge wirelessly or through USB-C and are IPX4 waterproof. However, the coolest part about these headphones or brand rather is that they're partnered with Loom and Music Cares, which are supporting up and coming struggling artists as of 2021. I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested. So first up, I wanna to touch on my workflow so you can get a better understanding of where I'm coming from. So to create content on YouTube and just in general, I use three apps. I use Final Cut Pro, Adobe Photoshop, and Lightroom. And Lightroom and Photoshop have been fine. I mean, for what I'm doing, just creating thumbnails and adding final touches, I mean a Core i3 MacBook Air can do the trick. And I actually used that last year and it was fine for that. Uh, but when it comes to video editing, this is where I ran into some trouble. And for some context, I had been using a spec'd out iMac 5K for over a year. So I was accustomed to, you know, a very very fluid experience. When you are video editing, although rendering is important, like the render times, um, in terms of just like putting things together, if that doesn't work, if manipulating the clips and just adding effects and watching stuff back, you know, in real time, if you can't do that, you're gonna get really frustrated, you're gonna get distracted, and that's exactly what happened to me. When I started editing back in November, I didn't notice it as much. Maybe my projects were a little bit more simplistic at the time, but as I began to add more clips, as I began to like have more than one stream of 4K, as I added more effects, I was beginning to see a lot of glitching and stuttering. And I might have some, you know, like shot on my iPhone type clips to demonstrate this, but believe me when I say this is all real, I endured it for over two months and I finally had my breaking point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's too frustrating. The glitches and this, the overall not smoothness of my playback and editing experience varied from mildly irritating to like, I'm gonna pull my hair out and like break my screen, frustrating. Um, I would get glitches where like things would just repeat just be, and just be like, eh, 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 and I just sit there like what? The playback head or the playhead would just sort of like glitch. Like it wouldn't just like smoothly go through. I had to switch to like best performance to even get playback on some portions of my project. Um, the sound would go off. I heard another YouTuber talk about this. Like the sound would just disappear and I'd have to quit the app and reopen it. And I'd sit there grinding my teeth and clenching my fists, you know, enduring the beach ball of death every 15 seconds, even with better performance turned on, not quite editing at 4K thinking the M1 chip is better than this. Every tech YouTuber is talking about this, like I am doing something wrong. And at first I was like, oh, it's probably the graphics. You know, the M1 chip's graphics aren't quite on par or as powerful as the AMD Vega 48 graphics in my iMac 5K that I was accustomed to using. And while that is true, that I thought, wait a second, this is an Apple chip running Apple software. This is supposed to be optimized. How would it make any sense for the CPU to be a bottleneck? And what I found is it's not, <laughs> it's not especially when you have the right amount of memory. And I began to realize like I had been using an iMac with 40 gigs of DDR4. And while I knew, you know, RAM, you know, had a positive effect on your video playback experience and having less of it wasn't great, I had figured that eight gigabytes of unified memory was good enough. Maybe I got the wrong impression from YouTube content. I watched a lot of comparisons. I mean, keep in mind, even though I talk about tech, I also listen to what the community has to say. And although people did recommend 16 gigs, some people said like eight gigs is fine, you should be fine. You know, they did 4K tests. They were showing rendering times mostly. People really hit home rendering speed. And while the M1 chip can render projects really, really quickly, regardless of what uh, type of memory or how much memory you have. Like I said in the beginning of the video, rendering time is important, but the actual editing experience, I would say is equally if not more important because if it's not fluid, you're going to get really mad and distracted and just the overall editing process is going to you know, be prolonged. And in that moment, I realized I messed up and that I probably needed to get my hands on a 16 gig model just to see if it made any difference. So I had to get rid of my eight gig model somehow because I had gone past the return window. However, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna call Apple anyway. 
And I called them and I explained my situation very honestly. I mean, 100% honestly, you know, there's no reason to lie. Um, I explained my situation, I explained what I do. And I said, I'm a creative professional. I love this laptop, I love the versatility, I love the power, but I think I made a mistake and I got the eight gig variant when I should have gotten a 16 gig variant. And after several phone calls and transfers and whatever, I actually got my return policy extended. I have to return the eight gig variant tomorrow. And I figured that if I you know, noticed no difference between the 16 and the eight gig one, I would probably return both and then like figure out a new machine for myself because I can't take this anymore. But when I got my hands on the 16 gig model, everything for the most part disappeared. I mean, sure, it's still, you know, not a perfect device for video editing, but I mean like with the proper amount of RAM, you can actually make use of the M1 chip and all its capability without having a bunch of stuttering, a bunch of playback issues and sound issues and whatever. And yeah, uh, I realize that RAM is important. It sounds really stupid as a tech YouTuber, I should know, but again, um, you know, with unified RAM and with Apple Silicon chips, I mean, you don't need all the RAM in the world to have a great experience. Like the iPad Pros have six gigs of RAM. The iPhone 12 Pro, I think has six gigs of RAM. Like they have figured out RAM efficiency and whatever, you know, really well over the past couple of years. But I was naive. I thought that I could get away with eight gigs and clearly you cannot. So the moral of the story is, the more RAM, the better for video editing. Of course, if you are you know, a creative professional just doing single streams of 4K, your you know, editing process isn't that crazy, you're not doing editing all the time, and you just want the touch bar, or you're doing a lot of photo editing, and you want a slightly brighter display, the 8 gig model is fine. It's fine for most people. Save your money, get a you know, higher capacity model. However, if you're doing a bunch of intensive video editing like I am every day with lots and lots of 4K footage and transitions and multiple video layers, you need to spend the extra money on additional 8 gigs of RAM. In fact, when when the 16 inch MacBook Pro comes out or the 14 inch or whatever, if there's more RAM than 16, I'm buying it. RAM is super important when it comes to video playback. And of course, while unified memory with the Apple Silicon chips is better, it's more efficient, you do need more of it. Maybe not like overkill, you might not need like 64 gigs. I don't even know if Apple will have that as a configuration, but the more the merrier, especially when you do work like this. Because again, I'll say it, um, the overall playback and editing experience is equally important, if not more important than the rendering times. And here's that shot on iPhone footage that I had alluded to, although a bit different than I had anticipated here. I'm actually editing this very project at home on my 16 gig MacBook Pro. And I'm here to tell you, the performance is substantially better. I'm not as frustrated. I can play things through at full quality here. I can even show you, I can go to, I can even see the cursor view. We are on better quality right here. No optimized media, no proxy media. Uh, however, uh, it's not perfect. I still get some hiccups here and there. I think that's pretty normal with video editing. I will say my iMac 5K does perform better. However, this is tolerable. I wanna show you activity monitor because as you can see here, I am right on the cusp of eight gigabytes and I don't even have other apps open. I just have Final Cut Pro open. So yeah, you really do need more memory because I've seen this go up to nine gigs and 10 gigs and maybe even 11 gigs at some point. So yeah, um, the performance is not gonna be perfect with the M1 MacBook Pro. I anticipate that I will be buying and using uh, maybe an iMac, probably a 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1X. It's gonna have double the performance. You know, I'm sure you've heard leaks about that, but yeah, for right now, Again, I am gonna to continue to push the point that you know 16 gigs is necessary if you wanna do any sort of video editing with multiple streams of 4K. As you can see, I have two right here. Uh, you know, I have some upper clips right here, not upper, just like on top of the main layer of footage that I have here. So yeah, the performance, it's not perfect, but it is much better. And I can see that as I am editing once again, this very video project. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. I would appreciate it if you'd leave a like, comment, and of course, subscribe for more content like this. Any interaction helps my content reach more people and it also helps the well-being of my channel. Also check out my link to Soundcore in the video description once again. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.